Hi everybody, this is Kim with Kim's Vinyl Expressions. Today we're going to stitch out an in the hoop bag from Bella Blue Embroidery. This is what it looks like, but I'm not going to be using the same material that I used on this one. Um, but it is a coffee cup. It has little coffee beans up here and you have um, some coffee cup accents on the outside of the bag, which is kind of cute. And if you want, you can put a monogram or a name or a saying here, whatever you want to do. And this is for a 6x10 hoop. So what you'll need is two D hooks or you can also use these um, keychain um, circles. Uh, I used webbing here because to me it's more sturdier and you're going to need a zipper. The, um, I used a 9 inch which was more than enough because you'll cut off the ends anyway and um, you'll need fabric for the front and the back and it also has a liner on the inside so you'll want to have fabric for that as well um, and um, that's pretty much it and oh and cutaway stabilizer and this um, it's pretty good really big size um, it fit my cell phone and my wallet and I still had room if I wanted to put some more little stuff in there um, finished um, it's nine and a half I got nine and a half by six and a half which is a pretty good size to just wear on your side if you want to you just need to make a strap to put a strap on there okay so we're gonna go ahead to the machine and um, I'm just I'll do step by step I'm not gonna record the stitching on the machine because then the video will just take too long but I will show you the um, the uh, placement stitches the tack down stitches how to put everything together okay so we'll go ahead and start that okay so I did the um, placement stitching for the bag and the zipper here um, I tried to use a lighter color because I'm using a lighter fabric today um, so hopefully you can see the placement stitch here um, I did not have a smaller zipper today um, I ran out of my smaller zipper so I'm gonna use a little larger one and what you want to do is you want to tape this down make sure that is that the zipper is between the two um, placement stitch lines and you're gonna tape it down you can use painters tape or I also have masking tape for different things um, paint I love painters tape I should get stock in it but <laughs> um, but we're gonna go ahead and just tack this I mean tape this down here to hold it in place while we tack it down and you you do it, it this is correct you do want to leave the zipper out here because later on we're gonna move it so it's okay that you have it extended out you just want to make sure you leave both ends out of the design we'll go ahead and tape that down tape it right there okay make sure it's down good and now we'll take it over to the machine and I'll tack it down and I'll be back in just a moment so I went ahead and did the tack down stitch. Went ahead and tacked down the zipper. Um, you can now take your tape off because you don't need it on there anymore. And the next step will be we're going to do another placement stitch right here. Um, it will be for the fabric. And the only reason I didn't use the same color um, thread as the zipper is because the fabric is going to cover this anyway. So we're going to go ahead and do another placement stitch here for the top fabric and I'll get back in just a moment. Okay, so I went ahead and did the placement stitch. Um, you can't see it any different because it's right on top of the tack down stitch of the zipper. So what you want to do now is you want to have material cut to do the top up here and also for the liner back here and the placement stitch you can see it back here I know my lighting is not that good because I'm using light colors but you can see the the placement stitch here so what we'll go ahead and do is we're going to take your fabric 
and you're going to put this one right side down but you're gonna you're gonna tape it um, or pin it however you want to do it below I, I usually line the fabric up right on the top of the zipper so what we'll go ahead and it doesn't I mean unless yours has any type of um, design on it mine sometimes it's not straight <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that there and I'm gonna go ahead and just tape that across the top because it's easier for me to do that and you're gonna tape it below because later on we're gonna lift this like that and then it'll be sewn in so for now we're just gonna tape it and you're gonna want to do the same for the back but um, yeah you're gonna do the same for the back line it up and then put it this one will be face down as well and we'll go ahead and do that I use a lot of masking tape you'll see that um, I just prefer it sometimes over the pins and I didn't get that all the way down so let me move that okay I'll just go ahead and put that like that and it's fine if you get stitching over your tape because when you take the tape off anyway it's going to just come right off even if it's in the stitches so you're fine with that so we got the back um, tape down we'll go ahead and get that sewn and the same thing with this and I'll be back when I'm done okay so I got my material tacked down I'm gonna go ahead and remove my tape on both sides and now what we're gonna do and I did forget to mention in the beginning of the video that you will also need batting um, quilting batting if you have that um, so we're gonna go ahead and the next step we're gonna do is put the batting down which I can cut this because it's a little too long um, and you do want to make it bigger than where you're actually putting it because you're gonna cut around it later anyway so we'll just go ahead and you're gonna want to put the batting up here and then you're going to pin this down because we're gonna stitch up here so we'll go ahead and you want to do the same thing well I don't put the batting in the back you don't need the batting in the back so you want to pull this up also um, this is your liner and we're gonna tap we're gonna pin them together so they both stay We'll go ahead and do that quick try to hold it as best as I can in the back and then we'll go ahead and pin that there Sometimes I can't get it all the way through and then I just want to make sure I have it in the back so that's good okay and then we'll do this side and I try to do things as tight as possible so I, I, I don't like any puffiness so oops I'll go ahead and pin this one I don't know why it's not going through okay go ahead and pin this one sometimes I have a problem I don't know why okay so we got that pinned down on both sides and this is a little loose here so I'm gonna need to take it off again got it now and if not if it's loose again then I'll just put a piece of tape on it oh yeah that's a lot better let's do the other side
All right, so we have this tacked down, I mean pinned down. We pulled the fabric up on both sides. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to do the next step, which is to stitch the beans up here. And I'll go ahead and get that stitched out and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I went ahead and um, stitched out the beans, which are up here. And it, um, next we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom. We're going to run a placement stitch here and tack down the material on both sides just like you did with the top. I already ran the placement stitch. You can't see it because it's it's on the same line, but I'll go ahead and get my material tacked down. Um, what you want to do is when you go to tack down your material, this time you want to put it up here because the same thing what we did for the top is once it stitches out, we're going to pull it down and you want to have it face down and the same thing on the back face down and we'll be right back okay so I went ahead and tacked down this material so we'll go ahead and take the tape off do the back also and see it doesn't matter if you get the tape in there because when you take it off it's just gonna come off anyway um, and if you leave a little bit, it's not going to matter because it's going to be inside the bag. But I'll go ahead and take it off anyway because that's just me. Okay, and that's good enough for me. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and pull this down. Just like we did the top earlier. And then this one, you're going to put batting under here again. You put it underneath and then pull this down that's pretty and then we'll go ahead and tack those two down and I just like to make sure it's nice and tight so this time because uh, these are longer and do this make sure this is really tight okay now I'll go ahead and tack out this down just stuck my finger um, I think I did that a little too far Okay, got that side. Okay, and then we'll pull that tighter, and then we'll do this side. All right, so we got this tacked down here and we got this tacked down nice and tight so now what we'll do we'll go ahead and run the next step which is the coffee cups on here and we'll be right back when that's done okay so I went ahead and did the stitching of the coffee cups um, should be able to see it this is good color and we got that done Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is going to be the applique cup. Um, I'll go ahead and run the placement stitch where the fabric is going to go down and then we'll tack it down and you're going to do that for the next couple of stitches. Um, but I'll go ahead and show them to you. Um, I'll go ahead and, and um, stitch out the placement stitching for the cup. Okay, we got the tack, um, the placement stitch for the cup. Let's see if you can see it. Yeah, it's right here. So what we'll go ahead and do, um, for those who don't know applique or are new to applique, um, you run a placement stitch first and then you put your material on top and then you go ahead and stitch that down, uh, tack that down. 
and then I'll come back and I'll cut around the, uh, the where the stitching is and then we'll run the next step. Okay, so we tacked down the um, material for the cup. And then, like I said, for those who don't know applique, I'll just go ahead and do this one right quick so you can see how I do it. Or if you're new to applique, um, you can see it as well. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut as close to the stitches as you can because after the cup is, um, the applique on the cup is done, which um, is a few steps, we're going to do a satin stitch around it. Um, so you wanna cut as close to the stitching as you can so the material doesn't stick out of the um, satin stitching. So we'll go ahead and do that. And this is actually, cute material you can use this bag for the spring for Easter um, I try to have materials for like all different holidays and seasons and and stuff I like a lot of pinks and purples and light blues and colors like that But this is actually a very, a very nice design. I like it, and the bag is pretty good size. I mean, if you're not, I don't carry a lot of stuff. The only th I have actually a crossbody, tiny pocketbook because all I do is carry my wallet and some other stuff. So this is actually perfect, and I, I love it. Um, very good design. And I'll have the link in the comment section of the video um, where you can get this design on, uh, on Bella Blue's website. And this material I got, I believe I got it in a pack from Walmart. And I think it was actually an Easter pack. There were like four different designs in there. Um, some of them had bunnies on it. And I think two. these are the two other pieces of material that they had but so that's it you cut as close to the stitching as possible and depending on your material I try to get the little the little ends off as well where it so it won't go into the satin stitching and that's just me I'm very OCD so see all that I make sure that comes out <laughs> And if you, if you nip a stitch while you're cutting around the applique, it's perfectly fine because later on when you do the satin stitch, it's going to cover it anyway. So you should be fine if you nip it a little bit here and there. And then I, then I usually take a lint brush and get that off as well. <laughs> I don't want anything in my stitches. Oh, okay. So that come off. Okay, so that's that's the applique cup. Um, there's a few other applique parts to this, so I'm going to go ahead and run those. Um, you'll do, the next part will be here. You'll do um, placement stitch, tack down stitch. Then you'll do the top of the cup, same thing, placement stitch, tack down stitch. And when I do that, I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, so I got all the applique done on the cup. I did this part. And like I said, um, you can add a monogram here, a name, or whatever you want if you choose to. But you want to put that, you want to add that before you go ahead and save the design and, and start stitching it. And then I did the top of the cup here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the satin stitching all the way around it. And I'll be back and show you that when I'm done. All right. So I did, oops, the um, satin stitching all around the cup. And there's a little piece of, okay. Okay. So <clears throat> applique stitching, uh, satin stitching all done on the cup. 
The next step is going to be placement stitches for the D hooks. So I did one there and I did one there and <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I'm catching a little cold. And what we're going to do is cut two inches of um, webbing. If I can find where I just put it. Oh, here it goes. Um, we're going to cut two piece, two, two inch pieces of webbing. And then we're going to, um, we're going to tape it down. So we can go ahead and tack that down. All right. So we have two inches. This one, I, I do a little bigger just in case. So I do like two and a half just to make sure. <clears throat> or two and a quarter, whatever, however long you want it. Okay, so then what we'll do, we got those. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we have the D hooks here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two and put them like this, put it inside there, and then you want it like that. And then we'll go ahead and I'm going to tape them down. <clears throat> and you want to make sure that you have them down like this and not like that because um, after the bag is done we're gonna cut around and you won't be able to cut it if this is up so the line is here I do it just a hair above the line and you want to make sure you do it in between the beginning and end of the line so you want to make sure it stitches the entire webbing or whatever you're gonna use <clears throat> to um, stitch that I mean to put the D hooks on so I'll go ahead and I'm gonna tape this down and as I said earlier it doesn't matter if your stitching goes through the tape because once you take the tape off it's gonna come out anyway and then we'll do this one and depending on your machine depending on your machine um, you, you're going to maybe need to lift your foot on the machine to go over this. Um, I have a brother NQ1600, and when I go over these, I raise it to 3.5 3, 3 instead, of, instead of the normal that I usually have it on, which is 1.5. Because this is too thick, and if you try to go over it without raising your foot you're going to pull it right off because the foot's going to go right in between there so depending on your machine raise your foot higher to make sure it goes over this so it doesn't rip it off and i'll be right back okay so i got the d hooks tacked down and go ahead and remove the tape And there's the straps, I mean the D-hooks, so you can attach whatever strap you want to attach to that. Now we have two steps left. Um, this next step is going to tack down the um, front part of your bag. So the next step is going to be a placement stitch. No, it's not. It's going... Hold on. <laughs> no, it's not. My mom, I'm sorry, my mind went blank for a minute. So the next step is going to be to tack down the front of your bag. So you want to take your material and lay it down. And I usually try to do just from top, make sure this part is covered and the sides, obviously. 
and we're gonna go ahead and tack that down make sure that is face down because when you turn it inside out it's gonna be the right way so we'll go ahead and get this tacked down and I'll be right back all right we got the um, the back of the bag tacked down face down now for the last step what we're gonna do is turn this over and you're gonna do the last part of your um, your liner so you're gonna take your liner and you're gonna put this face down like that and for this I am going to actually just tape it because um, it's easier to tape on the back so go ahead and do that always do a little extra make sure it stays so I put enough so it goes on my hoop okay and then we'll do the bottom try to get that tight okay do that I don't like it to I don't want to take the chance of it coming off because sometimes when I put tape on the back of my hoop it gets stuck to my machine and then it winds up coming off anyway okay so I got that face down and we'll go ahead and run the final stitch and then we'll be back to turn this out okay we got this all stitched out um, this is what the back looked like after I did the um, last stitch, which is the liner. My machine had a little hiccup over here. It's not a big deal. Um, it did not put any stitching here because you're going to have to turn the bag inside out and then sew the bottom part together. So what I usually do, I'll take this off. That off there gonna take it out of the hoop okay so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut all around here all the way around um, you want to leave at least some for a seam allowance like I, I I don't do that far out maybe about a quarter of an inch if that much um, so you're gonna cut all the way around but I try to do mine from the back because I don't want I want to leave some of this material down because I want to leave some of this material down here so when I have to sew it I can just tuck it in and just sew it that way it's a lot easier but um, we'll go ahead and cut all this out I always have a challenge turning bags right side out so just please bear with me and I also did forget to mention in the video that you don't want to use a zipper with metal teeth on it because you can ruin your machine, break needles, um, you just don't do it. Because it has to go over, and when it goes over, it, it, can, it can damage your machine on metal teeth. So I encourage everyone not to use metal teeth. See, I just left like that much. It's, it's not a lot. Then we'll do this and see you cut you're cutting the zipper off that's why you want to leave it on the ends make sure that's the top oh my goodness I'm gonna have a little challenge here. I forgot to open my zipper. Oh my god. 
Okay, so before I had a little hiccup and I forgot to tell you guys to open the zipper halfway um, before you lay your um, backing fabric on um, because I did that. I put the, the fabric on and I forgot to open the zipper. Um, so I had to, once I took it off my hoop and everything, I couldn't re-hoop it to get it to line up. So what I did is I went over it, um, twice in my sewing machine. Um, I, I opened up the, um, the fabric, I cut it open, I, the stitches and I pushed the zipper in there. So please don't forget to open your zippers whenever you're doing um, any type of project when you need to open the zippers. So now that I got my zipper in place, we're gonna go ahead and finish cutting this um, so we can finish this bag. And I do apologize about that. And then we're going to want to just cut <clears throat> around around the stitches and leave some for a seam allowance. <clears throat> and um, we'll go ahead and cut this. I can't believe I did that. I haven't done that in a very, very long time. So for the bottom part of the bag, because there is an opening here that was not stitched, I try to leave some longer here um, because it makes it easier when you have to sew it back up because you're going to have to sew the bottom part after you turn it right side out. So I'm going to just cut from here to where the stitching starts there and the same thing here like that and then we'll cut this off however you want to do that this is how I do it okay so <clears throat> now this is the hard part <laughs> for me anyway um, you want to, we're going to go ahead and turn this right side out. Um, and it's going to be a little tricky because you're only doing so far. The first thing that you're going to turn inside out, right side out, I mean, is the liner. So you want to be careful with that, that it doesn't split open over there. And the way that I found to do this is to do, try and push this in. I, I try to lift this. It's a little hard um, anytime you want to turn something right side out. I always have an issue. Um, but I just try to do it as however you need to do it. I try to pull it, put it in there a little bit so I can go in there and pull it. And then you just want to go slow so you don't um, rip it. So once I grab the inside now, now I just go little by little pushing it through. And it's a little hard if you haven't done this before. And I have ripped many, many different bags that I have done because of this. Um, so it's not the design. It's not the designer. It's just, you just have to be careful. <clears throat> And then I also keep um, a chopstick handy from my local Chinese restaurant. So I can, on any of my bags, I use it. Um, or you can use a dowel to um, poke out the corners. <sighs> See, it's a little hard. So I'm going to just take more and stick that through. 
as much as I can. Okay, so now we're gonna do that. And then just try to pull it through. And it's a little thick because of the batting that's in there and it makes a little a little harder but it's it's okay all right so now we're getting somewhere all right there we go so and you'll have to turn this again this is only for this part so we can get the liner sewed before we um, turn the whole thing right side out let me sit for a minute <sighs> So I try to get all the corners, which I'll have to do with my chopstick. And same thing here. I'm going to try and turn that out. There we go. And I and I'm I try to get everything out as much as I can. And then I'm going to take my chopstick and I get a chopstick with the rounded edge on it because if I have to go in there, I don't want to risk um, tearing the material. So, and you might just have to finish this part after you open the zipper, which I've, which I've had to do because um, I can't reach it. Um, okay, so we'll finish off these corners in just a few minutes. I just want to get this part done. So what I do here is I take my, ow, my X-Acto knife. And right here where your stabilizer is, you want to just cut a slice into it, which I do. But I, I actually, I cut mine out. So I'm going to do that as well. I don't leave any of that in there. So I just take my scissor and I go as close to the material as I can without tearing it. And again, this is my OCD. You you do it however you want to. If you want to just leave a, make a slit and leave that. Um, I personally don't like it because when you open the zipper, you can see the material, you can feel, the, I mean, the stabilizer. So I just slice an opening so I can get my scissor in there and then I just start cutting it. And I do that before I turn it right side out. And you don't have to worry about cutting any of these tails here because um, it'll be behind the liner once you get it sewn and turned right side out. So it's not going to affect anything. So I don't even bother um, cutting those off. have a rubber band I mean a band-aid on my finger and I'm having a hard time feeling cut my finger with the seam ripper before trying to do that okay <clears throat> so we have the opening here like I I spoke I told I told you about so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck it in here. Not You don't need to do that part. It's just I just did that so I can get these two parts. And you're going to tuck that in there. And now I'm going to cut this off. Because you don't need all of this. I need to sharpen my scissors. I've been saying it all week and I have not done it. Okay, so got that cut off. This is tucked in. I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to um, just sew this closed. 
And then we'll come back and finish this. Okay, so I went ahead and sewed that on my sewing machine. Now we will go ahead and come in here and open your zipper. And I just take it and I do that so it opens up. And then you want to turn this right side out. And this is easy. Just the liner is the hard part doing. So we're going to go ahead and turn that right side out. You want to get your corners and all that good stuff. Okay, Ooh, piece of thread there, I get that out, it's not a big deal. Okay, got that, and then we're going to turn this part, get those corners, and there's the inside of the bag with the lining, and go all the way in there, and then just close this up and there you go and then if you want you can put um, like what I did on the other one I put the little tassel on this so if you want if you have any tassels or you have any charms or anything you want to put on there you can but that is your bag so if you have any questions, if you have any questions, feel free to comment on my video, subscribe to my channel. I'll be having a lot of videos from different designers with their designs, and we'll see you soon. Thanks.